Hello scholars and welcome to the fourth installment of The Tale of Despero. Today we'll be reading chapters 13 through 15 and here's the recap. Last time when we left off, Despero is being taken down to the dungeons for his actions of interacting with humans. When he's on his way down, they tell his mother that the rats are going to eat him and she says farewell, meaning she thinks that she probably won't see him again and she's very sad about that so we are in chapter 13 and let's begin chapter 13 perfidy unlimited together the three mice traveled down 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 the thread around despero's neck was tight he felt as if it was choking him he tugged at it with one paw don't touch the thread barked the second hood yeah i could the first hood don't touch the thread they moved quickly and whenever Despero slowed, one of the two hoods poked him in the shoulder and told him to keep moving. They went through holes in the wall and down golden stairs. They went past rooms with doors that were closed and doors that were flung wide. The three mice traveled across marble floors and under heavy velvet drapes. They moved through warm patches of sunlight and dark pools of shade. This, thought Despero, was the world he was leaving behind him. The world that he knew and loved, and somewhere in it, the Princess P was laughing and smiling and clapping her hands to music, unaware of Despero's fate. That he would not be able to let the princess know what had become of him seemed suddenly unbearable to the mouse. Would it be possible for me to have a last word with the princess? Despero asked. A word, said the second hood. You want a word with a human? I want to tell her what has happened to me. Geez, said the first hood. He stopped and stamped a paw on the floor in frustration. Cripes, you can't learn, can you? The voice was terribly familiar to Despero. Furlough, he said. What? said the first hood irritably. Despero shuddered. His own brother was delivering him to the dungeon. His heart stopped beating and shrunk to a small, cold, disbelieving pebble. But then, just as quickly, it leapt alive again, beating with hope. Furlough, Despero said, and he took hold of one of his brother's paws on in his own. Please, let me go. Please, I'm your brother. Furlough rolled his eyes. He took his paw out of Despero's. No, he said. No way. Please, said Despero. No, said Furlough. Rules are rules. Reader, do you recall the word perfidy? As our story progresses, perfidy becomes an ever a more appropriate word, doesn't it? Perfidy was certainly the word that was in Despero's mind as the mice finally approached the narrow, steep stairs that led to the black hole of the dungeon. So scholars, the author here is using the word perfidy. Remember, that means untrustworthy because Despero feels betrayed by his brother and then he cannot trust his brother because he's the one who's bringing him to the dungeon. They stood there, the three mice, two with hoods and one without, and contemplated the abyss before them. And then Furlough stood up on his hind legs and placed his right paw over his heart. For the good of the castle mice, he announced to the darkness, we deliver this day to the dungeon a mouse in need of punishment. He is, accordingly to the laws we have established, wearing the red thread of death. The red thread of death, repeated Despero in a small voice. Wearing the red thread of death was a terrible phrase, but the mouse didn't have long to consider its implications because he was suddenly pushed from behind by the hooded mice. The push was a strong one, and it sent Despero flying down the stairs into the dungeon. As he trumb tr tumbled, whisked, Skurs over tail through the darkness there were only two words in his mind one was perfidy and the other word that he clung to was p perfidy p perfidy p these were the words that pinwheeled through despero's mind as his body descended in to the darkness so scholars despero is thinking about two things the person that he loves p and the word perfidy which remember means untrustworthy so remember he cannot trust his brother or his family because they're the ones who decided that he has to go to the dungeon chapter 14 darkness 
Despero lay on his back at the bottom of the steps and touched the bones in his body one by one. They were all there, and amazingly, they were unbroken. He got to his feet and became aware of a terrible, foul, extremely insulting smell. The dungeon reader stank. It stank of despair and suffering and hopelessness, which is to say that the dungeon smelled of rats. And it was so dark, Despero had never before encountered darkness so awful, so all-encompassing, that darkness had a physical presence, as if it were being all its own. The mouse held one small paw up in front of his whiskers. He could not see it, and he had the truly alarming thought that perhaps he, Despero Tilling, did not even exist. Oh my, he said out loud. His voice echoed in the smelly darkness. Perfidy, said Despero, just to hear his voice again, just to assure himself that he did exist. P, said Despero, and the name of his beloved was immediately swallowed up by the darkness. He shivered, he shook, he sneezed, his teeth chattered, he longed for his handkerchief, he grabbed hold of his tail, it took him a long, frightening moment to even locate his tail, so absolute was the darkness, to have something, anything to hold on to. He considered fainting. He deemed it the only reasonable response to the situation in which he found himself, but then he remembered the words of the Threadmaster, honor, courtesy, devotion, and bravery. I will be brave, thought Despero. I will try to be brave like a knight in shining armor. I will be brave for Princess P. How best for him to be brave. He cleared his throat. He let go of his tail. He stood up straighter. Once upon a time, he said out loud to the darkness. He said these words because they were the best. The most powerful words that he knew and just saying them confronted him. Once upon a time, he said again, feeling a tiny bit braver. There was a knight and he all, wore always an armor of shining silver. Once upon a time, boomed a voice from the darkness, a knight in shining armor. What does a mouse know of such things? That voice, the loudest voice that Despero had ever heard, could only, he assumed, belong to the world's largest rat. Despero's small, overworked heart stopped beating, and for the second time that day, Despero fainted. Okay, chapter 15. Light. When Despero awoke, he was cupped in the large, calloused hand of a human, and he was staring into the fire of one match, and beyond the match there was a large, dark eye looking directly at him. A mouse with red thread, boomed the voice. Oh, yes, Gregory knows the way of mice and rats. Gregory knows, and Gregory has his own thread marking him. See here, mouse? And the match was held up to a candle, and the candle sputtered to life, and Despero saw that there was a rope tied around the man's ankle. Here is the difference between us. Gregory's rope saves him, and your thread will be the death of you. The man blew the candle out and the darkness descended and the man's hand closed more tightly around Despero and Despero felt his Beauregard heart. Despero felt his beleaguered heart start up a crazy rhythm of fear. Who are you? He whispered. The answer to that question, Mouse, is Gregory. You are talking to Gregory the Jailer, who has been buried here, keeping watch over this dungeon for decades, for centuries, for eons, for eternities. You are talking to Gregory the Jailer, who, in the richest of ironies, is nothing but a prisoner here himself. Oh, said Despero, um, may I get down, Gregory? The mouse wants to know if Gregory the Jailer will let him go. Listen to Gregory, mouse. You do not want to be let go. Here in this dungeon, you are in the treacherous dark of the heart of the world. And if Gregory was to release you, the twistings and turnings and dead ends and false doorways of this place would swallow you for all eternity. Only Gregory and the rats can find their way through this maze. The rats because they know and because the way of its mirrors their own dark hearts. And Gregory because the rope is forever tied to his ankle to guide him back to the beginning. 
Gregory would let you go, but you would only beg him to take you up again. The rats are coming for you, you see? They are? Listen, said Gregory. You can hear their tails dragging through the muck and filth. You can hear them filing their nails and teeth. They are coming for you. They are coming to take you apart piece by piece. Despero listened, and he was quite certain that he heard the nails and teeth of the rats, the sound of sharp things being made sharper still. They will strip all the fur from your flesh and all the flesh from your bones. When they are done with you, there will be nothing left except red thread. Red thread and bones. Gregory has seen it many times. The tragic end of a mouse. But I need to live, said Despero. I can't die. You cannot die. Ah, that is lovely. He says he cannot die. Gregory closed his hand more tightly around Despero. And why would that be, mouse? Why is it that you cannot die? Because I'm in love. I love somebody, and it is my duty to serve her. Love, said Gregory, love. Hark you, I will show you the twisted results of love. And another match was struck. The candle was lit, and Gregory held it up so that its flame illuminated a massive, towering, teetering pile of spoons and kettles and soup bowls. Look at that, mouse, said Gregory. That is a mo monument to the foolishness of love. What is it? asked Despero. He star stared at the great tower that reached up, up, up into the blackness. What it looks like, spoons, bowls, kettles, all of them gathered here as hard evidence of the pain of loving a living thing. The king loved the queen and the queen died. This monstrosity, this junk heap is the result of love. I don't understand, said Despero. And you will not understand until you lose what you love. But enough about love, said Gregory. He blew out the candle. We will talk about your life instead. And how Gregory will save it if you so desire. Why would you save me? Despero asked. Have you saved any of the other mice? Never, said Gregory. Not once. Why would you save me then? Because you, mouse, can tell Gregory a story. Stories are light. Light is a precious thing in a world so dark. Begin at the beginning. Tell Gregory a story. Make some light. And because Despero wanted very much to live, he said, Once upon a time. Yes, said Gregory happily. He raised his hand higher and then higher, still until, until Despero's whispers brushed against his leathery, time-worn ear. Go on, mouse, said Gregory. Tell Gregory a story. And it was in this way that Despero became the only mouse to be sent to the dungeon whom the rats did not reduce to a pile of bones and a piece of red thread. It was in this way that Despero was saved. Reader, if you don't mind, that is where we will leave our small mouse for now. In the dark of the dungeon, in the hand of an old jailer, telling a story to save himself. It is time for us to turn our attention elsewhere. Time for us, reader, to speak of rats. And of one rat in particular. So here's the picture of Despero telling a story to Gregory. Okay, now I have some questions for you. Okay, the first one is, how does Despero feel when he is first brought to the dungeon? And how does he feel about his family? The second question is, why does Gregory decide to save Despero? Okay, these questions are in the comments below. Um, scroll down and you can look at them. Remember to either discuss these questions with a family member who's listening to the book with you or to write down your questions and take a picture and send them to your teacher. So do that now and pause the video. Okay, now we're back and we are going to discuss the questions that I had asked of you. Okay, so the first one was how does Despero feel when he's brought to the dungeon and how does he feel about his family? Well, we know in the text it gives us evidence of how he feels. He faints because he is so scared of being in the dungeon. And we know that he's really upset with his family. Remember, his brother Furlow brought him to the dungeon and he was really upset about that. The second question was, why does Gregory decide to save Despero? Well, we know in the text that Gregory said that all of the other mice who had come to the dungeon died from the rats, but 
Gregory was going to save Despero because Despero knew how to tell stories. And I think this is a great quote that we can use as text evidence. He says, this is Gregory. He says, because you, Mouse, can tell Gregory a story. Stories are light. Light is precious in a world so dark. Begin at the beginning. Tell Gregory a story. Make some light. So Gregory, who lives in the dungeon, which is a very dark place, says that Despero can bring light to the dungeon by telling him stories. Okay, that was chapters 13 through 15. When we come back, we are going to learn about another character, a rat named Roscoro. See you next time.